So just got a letter from Tyler, Tyler B. And Tyler just uh, had a negative 40 wind chill, which makes me sounding like a little bit of a whining complainer complaining about the cold the other day or last week or whenever it was. But anyway, uh, he sent me a, I don't know if it's gonna show up, uh, that says Binford 6100. You know, the tool time reference, Binford. Um, I jokingly put Binford on a couple of my, a couple of my tools that I've made or cobbled together over the past year or so. And that's pretty cool. Nice sticker that's gonna go up there and I very much appreciate it. W. Walters from Hawaii sent some uh, University of Hawaii Institute for Astronomy stickers, uh, which is pretty cool. I would absolutely love to go to Hawaii. I have never been there. Uh, every time I travel, it's always like central United States for vacations and stuff. I've seen seen the Grand Canyon, and I've gone to the Smoky Mountains in Tennessee, which, oh man, I love the mountains. I, I love just, I'd rather see a lot of geographical awesomeness rather than just water, the ocean. I'm not big into the ocean kind of thing, but Hawaii, someplace I'd love to go. They've got a lot of nice scenery out there and thank you very much for the stickers. And Mike Fulton from Mike Fulton Woodshop. I put a shop tour of his on my website not too long ago. Uh, he sent me a nice big sticker. He said Patrick's uh, was Patrick's big sticker over there. It was a little lonely. He needed some competition on there, so. He sent me a nice big sticker and uh, Mike Fulton, he's got some pretty funny t-shirts for sale on his website. MF Mike Fulton, I can, I'm sure you understand the MF kind of jokes, Mike Fulton. Anyway, he's a good guy and uh, I'll put this sticker up there too. I was a little hesitant to post this computer cart this week because it's so similar to the Cyclone and Shopvac cart I did a couple weeks ago, but this was one of those projects where uh, you just get something in your head and you, it's stuck in your brain and nothing else matters until you get this specific project done. So I figured I'd just go ahead and get it done and have it out of the way. I wanted a computer in the shop for a long, long time, primarily because of SketchUp. It's so much more convenient to uh, when you're creating a plan for something um, to actually be with the item while you're designing. It's, it's easier to do that, that way you can visually make changes and just measure and, and, and update as you go as opposed to taking whatever item you have into the house and figuring out a way to position it in the shop where you can work with it and it's not in the way and all this other crap. And not only that, but if you're actually out here in the shop and you do need a measurement, instead of going all the way back in there uh, to get it and being distracted by other things, you have it right here. So that was primarily the main reason. Um, but there's also some other stuff that have come, came up, which is going to make this a lot more beneficial. I'm using Linux on it right now. This is Linux. This is uh, Ubuntu Studio, uh, which is just basically an XFCE desktop environment, Ubuntu, uh, distribution of Ubuntu. Um, that's got some stuff for video editing and um, graphics and audio and that stuff. Um, but I'm kind of having problems with the actual SketchUp installation. I've never had any problems previously, even with the same setup, running Linux and using SketchUp and for the life of me right now I can't get around a couple problems that are really bugging the crap out of me and also the plugins that I use that I'm starting to use a little bit more um, there's a a drill plugin that I purchased for SketchUp and it's not 100% necessary but I purchased it and I like to use it I can use it on the other computer but I really like to use it out here as well and also SketchuCam SketchuCam plugin hardly works at all on Linux and for some stuff that's coming up I really 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 need that or want it rather so I may end up having to go back to Windows out here in the shop which if it happens it's not the end of the end of the world I would really like to stick with Linux since it's free and it's nice and it's easy to work with it just for Windows based programs it's a really it's really a it's really just a pain in the butt so I may end up going back to Windows, unfortunately, out here in the shop. Also, the dust control inside the computer. 
Um, that seemed to be like the number one question over the weekend is what are you going to do about dust? Well, I've had this computer for about five years now and I've never had the, the sides of the case on it. Um, and it's been inside a really crammed apartment with three dogs and a cat. So I'm sure you understand about cat hair and dog hair and pet dander and oh my god it was horrible to keep that apartment clean because of the animals. Which meant this thing got dusty all the time and the solution to it was to just blow it out and blow it out and vacuum it out and it's worked just fine and it looks actually really clean in there on the motherboard so I don't see a problem leaving it like that uh, when I'm not using it for an extended period of time I'm probably gonna put a bag over it but I'm not gonna create any type of fancy case or filter system for the position and when it's in which it is in right now. I have plans to make an actual custom computer case, but it's not going to be on this particular stand. Um, so when it gets dusty, I'll blow it out. And some of the responses to that comment I made was, well, what about the really fine dust that's going to get inside there and destroy the hard drive and all that stuff? My shop really isn't that dusty. I've got a really good working cyclone unit. I've got the shop vac uh, cyclone unit. Uh, I got the dust collector and I've got the shop vac unit that really does a good job at controlling dust here in the shop and as far as the airborne dust that's going to destroy a hard drive, well if, if there's that much in the air to destroy a hard drive then I should just pack up my stuff and quit doing this stuff anyway because that's the same dust that'll harm me and I'm trying to get rid of all that anyway so anyway I don't think it's going to be a problem uh, but if it is and it kills this computer, oh well it's just a bunch of cobbled together crappy parts that have just been sitting in storage for the past year or two. In the computer cart video, I was making some plywood squares out of a longer piece of plywood. So every time I would make the cut, my next piece I would flip over, make the cut, and then my next piece I would flip the material over again. And a lot of people ask why. Well, if there's any type of variance in the fence, uh, um, distortion, whatever, and you basically end up, I'm exaggerating this, but you end up cutting a wedge as opposed to a perfect square. If there's any type of angle that arises, then that gets compounded every time you cut it if you're cutting it straight. On a table saw, I really, really, really doubt that is going to be a problem at all because you take the time to set the fence up as close to parallel as you possibly can on the blade. So I really don't think it's necessary to do on a table saw, but I'm in the habit of doing it because uh, I worked at Ashley Furniture in a frame mill for a couple of years and we used a lot of, uh, we used the bandsaw, a really large bandsaw to create some fast, easy, quick squares on uh, OSB pieces for, you know, glue up blocks or whatever. So at that time you'd use a push stick and you just push squares through the bandsaw really fast and flip the board every time because on a bandsaw when you push the board really fast, push the material through it fast, the blade tends to push off to one side. So you really do get a lot of deflection on a bandsaw and if you just keep pushing it through with the board in the same orientation by the time you get to the end of like a 30 inch board making 3 inch squares then you have a very visual wedge at the end of, at the, end of the, the run so at that particular job that I had we were supposed to flip it every single time and it took away the variance uh, it cancels each other out every single time you do it so not really necessary on the table saw but I'm just used to doing it Bazinga.